Hi everyone, this is Ryan Weitzel from FLC Energy. Um, before I start, I'll address uh, my face here. Um, I have two words, one wheel. Uh, it's an electric skateboard, and I've had some issues with uh, what's called pushback on it, which has caused me to fall a couple times. Anyway, uh, I'm making a video real quick today about why it's important to choose a reputable contractor and somebody who's certified um, and follows best practices when insulating air sealing um, basically doing efficiency work in, in new construction retrofits uh, or in this case a, a flip pretty much a, a gut rehab of a property um, as you can see this has been insulated um, it's all soundproofing insulation sono bats and the interior walls the exterior walls are insulated so you can see the uh, the ceiling is also insulated with R19 bat insulation, which is kind of interesting because um, the attic is going to be encapsulated on this property. It's going to have a open cell spray foam on the back side of it, uh, meaning that this is not going to be where the house ends. Um, the attic itself is going to be conditioned, so it'll be way cooler than your attic or my attic. Um, no. You know, you can store things up there. You won't have any issue with uh, what's up there. The problem is, is well, a couple things. I'm here installing a new bath fan because the bath fan that was installed uh, was just venting directly into the attic. So it would have been throwing the moisture from what is soon to be a bathroom here um, into the attic, into the conditioned space, not getting the moisture to the outside. So I've installed a new Broen. Uh, it's called a ZB80 bath fan, ZB80L actually, it has a light with it. Um, it's got a six inch vent, comes with a reducer, it can be four inches if you want it to, but ours is always six. Um, I'm gonna be venting it out to the house with a, a six inch rigid pipe that'll be completely masticed and sealed and it'll, it'll terminate directly outside so that there's no chance that any moisture uh, that's in the bathroom is going to escape and get into the uh, other areas of the living space um, but one of the sort of a, a problem right off the bat with I guess I'll start with the existing bath fan was one um, did not have the amount of CFM to really move um, the moisture out of this space and what they did I don't know if I can reach it up here we'll see yeah, there we go. They were venting it, not with rigid hard pipe, but with this flexible stuff. This stuff is not, <laughs> this is not for venting bath fans. I mean, you know, you can probably find YouTube videos of people trying to convince you that it is, but it really shouldn't be used for it. See how flexible this gets? That's nice when it comes to trying to speed up the process of, of venting this out, but in terms of moving airflow, really doesn't do anything. Um, can switch it this way hopefully it doesn't mess you up um, so four inches of this but it's never pulled tight when it makes this like 90 degree turn see how it gets all bunched up there um, the air gets trapped in it uh, it doesn't vent correctly and your bath fan is never going to move the appropriate amount of um, CFM or cubic feet of air per minute that it's supposed to um, people never pull them tight in the attic either so they just you could take like a what's a 50 cfm bath fan or even in like this one an 80 cfm bath fan and it could pull more like i don't know 30 20 maybe less um it really just depends on how poorly it's installed now with a a rigid line something that's completely sealed and when we seal this box as well um it's only going to be able to pull uh, air from within this space so it's going to pull all the air all the moisture from in here um, and then get it directly to the outside again um, everything I'll come down here really quickly and kind of show you normally right off the fan we'd like to go for at least two feet of a straight run with the hard pipe but in this case we don't really have the option so we'll do sort of best practices on it um, this is a six inch rigid hard pipe so this is going to come off of the uh, the bath fan that you just saw where my hand is going into it and then it's gonna go up and then break 90 degrees and go directly to the outside and be vented out to the uh, gable end of the house um, and then again I'll seal it with mastic I won't be able to test it today to see how much air it's moving but um, it'll move 
it'll probably pull in the, the 60s or so, um, even though it's an 80 CFM bath fan. And that's just because of this uh, 90 degree break that we have right off the bat. Uh, again, if it was to run for two feet and then do a 90 degree turn, um, you get better airflow. That air just needs to be thrown a little bit before it, uh, it builds up, I guess, a resistance in the line. So that's one thing. That's what I'm doing here today. But one of the kind of things that I'm inspecting while I'm here too is, again, the uh, insulation quality. So why they put the insulation in the ceiling here, I, I don't know. And it's only R19, so it's not even up to code for what is essentially new construction. Um, they're going to be putting open cell on the back of the roof line here, which you can see, you can tell it's an old house because you can see sort of the live edge of the old timbers. Um, anyway, there's flooring up above it. So this is the attic flooring. Um, problem here is that this is vented on the outside. When I pull this insulation out, this is an open soffit right in here. You can, there's air that moves from the outside into this attic area it goes up 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 and then vents out uh the the top of the uh the roof line through a ridge vent um or at least it, it used to um with open cell when they're spraying you could see there was already insulation in here so they're not going to be able to spray the open cell all the way down to the top of the exterior wall the top plate which means that this area in here is going to be open and is going to allow air to move kind of freely into this little call it a devil's triangle in here um, that's going to create moisture issues and i've already done this in a house um, where someone spray foamed um, and you know they the guy thought he had a great spray foam job and everything and you know 98 percent of it that was true but the two percent that had the problem um, when I ran a blower door test and I had a thermal camera, I could go around the entire perimeter. So like, you know, all these areas, the whole perimeter of the property. Um, and I could see air that was pulling in and pulling down through the exterior walls or pulling across um, the, the drywall and into like the attic access, the light switches, a little bit of everywhere. Um, and it created a moisture problem in the house. So this is uh, not a job that we're doing, but it's something that we're, we're gonna have to address as we're doing um, the work here. And we're gonna have to figure it out um, and probably have them pull this insulation. I mean, you don't, it's just like when you're doing a crawl space. You don't wanna have the insulation in two places. It's gotta be in one space or the other, and that's it. And that's why you should get a reputable contractor, somebody who's certified, who's accredited, who has experience um, and is going to follow best building practices from the Building Performance Institute. It's important. Otherwise, you're spending more money um, and you're getting a, you're not getting the service out of the products that you're installing. And some of this stuff is pretty expensive. Encapsulating an attic, pricey. It should be done correctly. Same thing with a crawl space. It needs to be done the correct way for it to last. Well, uh, I think that's it. I'm end rant. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. Bye.